they're going to spend all of their money on some number of X and some number of Y that makes them happy, right? <coughs> this also works like this. The more money the person has, right, the farther out that's going to go. So the more utility the person has, the more this goes out. The more money the person has, the more it comes out. Okay. So I wanted to say something. This is exciting. So we know, so we know how much money. <laughs> So this is going to involve, involve a lot of math, and like knowing the math doesn't really matter. But as long as you have the concepts, it's really good. Uh, <laughs> let's say we have a guy, and he has a utility bill. We're going to say this is his utility bill, right? And there's another one up here, right? And so this is right down here, right? So he has a budget constraint. It intersects this at one point, it intersects this at two points, and it doesn't intersect that one, right? Which point on his budget constraint, someone, someone guess, what, what point, what bundle is the person going to choose? The one in the middle, the one that falls on one here. Exactly. Because this, right, is the highest utility curve he can use. <laughs> that, was, that was classy. <laughs> All right. <laughs> So if he goes here, right, he'll still be spending all his money, right? But he will not be nearly, I guess you'd say, as happy with his bundle as he would be if he went to this here. So what is special about this particular point? I mean, like intuitively, it has one point. It's, it's as far out as you can go with this point, right? You just push and push and push until you hit here, where it's at one point. But the other thing you can say is it's tangent. And so, I don't think I'm going to go into the math because it would take way too long. But what you do is you maximize, you maximize its utility function <laughs> um, based on the constraint, but based on the budget constraint. So if any of you know how to do Lagrangians, that's what you use. Yes, you too. Uh, you know, p x x y y. Right, and then you take. Take lambda, you take the three um, <coughs> further conditions, and then you have your you have the answer. You, you will be able to find this point, which is essentially the point of tangency. Okay, <coughs> so that is all for individual alone by himself. But let's say that you have Tom Cruise, and he or no, not Tom Cruise, Robinson Caruso. <laughs> 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 Let's say Tom Cruise was stranded on an island because you'll find that our, our consumer is going to get quite schizophrenic in a moment. <laughs> 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 okay. So we know that every consumer, right, has his little utility curve, right? In this, we're just going to say he has consumption. Right? In this case, we're going to say he has only one good he can get, and that's consumption. So maybe it's coconuts, maybe it's pieces of sand. When it's Tom Cruise, it's probably just his own glorious smile in a glass of water. Right? He's still <laughs> the same nutrition cycle, right? And he gets a certain marginal benefit from that. Again, we can see the marginal benefit decreases as the consumer goes up. Right? So he still gets a little bit happier. Staring his reflection one more time, but not much happier, right? First time is cool. Second time, it's okay. third time, not so much. He starts to even realize that he's a little creepy. <laughs> and he has leisure, which he probably also spends looking at his face in the water. But let's say he does something else, when, you know, napping or something for leisure, right? And we call it LE. And again, so he gets old after a while. After the eighth hour of sleep, or it could be eight hours of sleep, well, you know, one or two hours is great. Then he gets more boring. Then he gets more boring. Then he gets no need to sleep anymore. Then there's no need to have four. That's not the level of sleep. 
<laughs> and so that's all well and good, right? But where is he getting his consumption from, right? He can't just produce his own consumption. Really, staring into the water and your own consumption doesn't count as consumption. Let's say coke also doesn't count, right? And someone on the island has to pick coke out. And this is where it gets weird. This is why we're using Tom Cruise. Um, <laughs> he's also the one picking the coke out. So we are going to say that the consumer is the same person as the firm. And because Tom Cruise is bored and crazy on this little island, he is going to pay himself money for the <laughs> coconuts that he picks. And then he's going to use that money to buy coconuts from the market. That is essentially the pile of coconuts that he has on the island. <laughs> so, this is Tom Cruise crazy. <laughs> so, he pays himself a wage, right? And as the wages get lower, <laughs> as the wages get higher, he will produce more labor. So if, there, if, if he's paying himself a million dollars a year, right, he's been working all the time. Uh, but if he's only paying himself five dollars an hour, you know. You know, he's not McDonald's, he's not McDonald's for real. Um, <clears throat> right? And then you have the margin <coughs> that the firm, the other half of Tom Cruise's brain that isn't the consumer, get from uh, labor, right? So after you start out, let, let's say you're picking coconuts, right? And Peter, you pick, you, you, you go out and you see a coconut tree, right? How easy is it going to be on your imaginary island to pick one or two coconuts? I don't know. Well, like, there's coconuts everywhere, right? <laughs> okay. So you're just looking around an island. There's hundreds of coconuts on the island. Okay. How hard is it going to be to find one or two coconuts? Not that hard. Not that hard. But how about like 50 coconuts? What if you wanted to find like half the coconuts in all the island? That would be harder. Hard. And if you wanted to find every last coconut, even the ones buried under the sand, even the ones that aren't quite ripe at the top of the tree? Yeah, much harder. Much harder. So the marginal benefit Tom Cruise's left side of his brain's labor is going to be much lower, right? So this this presents a problem for the firm, right? Because they want to pay, you know, in an ideal world, they just pay someone a set wage, right? And the person would work and work and work, and they would get equal productivity out of the person, right? But this isn't the case. As a person works more and more, or as you hire more and more people, as more and more Tom Cruises pop out of the sand before Tom Cruises' eyes, um, <laughs> this isn't this isn't going to work so well, right? So we have labor on one end, right, and you have wages, oh, a marginal benefit on here, right? And so let's chart these over each other, right? You have on one hand the marginal benefit of his labor, and the other hand the amount of labor the person's willing to give for a high wage, right? So, if the firm is paying him a million dollars, right? To get much for that last million dollars of work, this is a million dollars per hour, not non-total, right? This last million dollars per hour, right? He's working all these hours. And his productivity is not going to be that high for that last million dollars because you know, there just aren't any more coconuts to get. He's like, they, they say, go find all the coconuts you can and we'll pay you a million dollars. He's only going to find two coconuts. And that's not a million dollars anymore. At least not in the pocket. <laughs> maybe, maybe Tom Cruise paid more dollars in coconuts than that. <clears throat> right? And if they pay him five dollars, He's not going to pick enough coconuts because if you look at the wage, right? Tom Cruise is not going to buy, pick up very many coconuts. He's paying five dollars for coconuts, right? He's not going to buy them. So what ends up happening is you hit kind of a balance point. So what this basically says is 